they be cramping my style all week. Craving chocolate trees, checking pants, checking seeds, sipping herbal tea, and fight for menstrual equity. Sheesh, sheesh, sheesh. Hey, hey, I get cramps at. Get cramps at. tuned in to the Kick Cramps Ass podcast with your host, Brittany Walker, advocating for menstrual equity, period poverty, and womb wellness. New episodes on Menstruation Mondays. Hello. Welcome, everybody. Happy Menstruation Monday. Welcome to the Kick Cramps Ass podcast, where I am your host, Brittany Walker, and you've made it to season two, episode 11, where we are talking about embracing your divine femininity. Now, we have a special guest today, Miss Leslie Williams Mitchell with Noonien, and we'll bring her on in just a moment. But for the month of May, we are advocating for May is Menstruation Month, May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and it's also Women's Health Month. And then on May 28th, it is our menstrual hygiene day. And you know, we had that episode at the end of April where we had Ina Jerga from the Menstrual Hygiene Day organization. So we're so excited about this month. And you know, we like to kick off each episode with the I Am Power Statement, where I represents inspiration, A represents affirmation, and M represents manifestation. And the I Am Power Statement for today is, I am open to discovering more about the power of the divine feminine in an effort to transform to my highest self, Ashe. So there it is. You know, we also like to give a quote of the day. So today's is, she remembered who she was and the game changed. And that's by Layla Delia. All right, guys, you know, each episode, we're always sipping out of our special mug with our cramp elixir. So I'm going to go ahead and enjoy this for just a moment. We're going to Head over to the commercial break, and we'll be back in just a moment. Have you tried our best seller, the Cramp Elixir? It's our herbal tea blend designed to reduce and eliminate menstrual cramps, PMS symptoms, and other uterine health issues that are hindering your day-to-day progress. Our elixir may decrease inflammation, reduce stress and anxiety, regulate blood flow, balance your mood, and it can kick cramps ass. It includes a variety of herbs, including hibiscus, red raspberry leaf, calendula, motherwort, awashaganda, plus more. Head over to kickcrampsass.org and grab yours today. Now, back to the show. All right, guys, welcome back to this episode. We are so excited about today's guest. So let's talk about Leslie Williams Mitchell with Munion. Now, she is an L.A.-based storyteller with experience as an actor, model, and writer. She's a mom of three small children and the founder of Moonian. The mission of Moonian is to help restore harmony by elevating the feminine through knowledge and inspiration. So let's welcome Leslie Williams Mitchell. Welcome, Leslie. Thank you so much. Hi, Brittany. Hello, it is such a pleasure to be speaking with you again. I know the last time that we met, it was me being on your podcast, episode 25 of your podcast. And we're going to put that link in the description of this episode. But we definitely would like to start off with what is Moonian and what's your mission with that organization? Yeah, thank you. So I started Moonian almost exactly a year ago on May 1st of 2023. And you know, it just came out of a place of wanting to give back. And now that I have two small daughters and just reflecting on my experience as a girl and a woman and feeling like some dots weren't connected for me and also just being connected to so many brilliant, amazing women doing things, the dots just kind of came together. So the first phase of Noonien was community building 
And that is why I started the podcast Synergy, where I interview women who are using their gifts and talents of ser in service of others. Uh, but the heart behind Moon Yin is to help restore harmony by elevating the feminine through knowledge and inspiration. And that was my mission statement because, you know, we've lived in a patriarchy. I never thought I'd be a person who even used that word growing up, but it's true. <laughs> it's true. And um, so I think we're in, we're exciting times where there's finally given some attention to women's issues and um, yeah, I'm just doing my part in that. And so the knowledge and inspiration, because I've always been an avid learner. I love to learn. I want to learn from the ancestors. I want to learn from this community, anything that can help women, on, girls, yeah. wherever they are. Because there's some things that are universal. Some things that I feel have been lost on us in, in America, in the Western culture. And an inspiration, because uh, being a cre highly creative person, I'm a, I, I always appreciate inspiration. And so I love to pass that along as well. That is so beautiful. We absolutely love everything that you're doing. And guys, towards the end of the episode, we're going to make sure Lexley plugs herself so you can subscribe to her. I get her newsletters each week. Always such helpful information in addition to the podcast episode that she is featuring. So we uh, said it briefly earlier, but we were on it to be on episode 24 of the podcast. So tell us more about the type of guests that you interview in an effort to empower the divine feminine. I know you just briefly spoke on it, but is it more on health and wellness in general? Is it just focusing on the menstrual cycle? Is it optimal wellness where it's mental, emotional, spiritual, everything that we need? You know, I kind of tie it all together. I'm open to interviewing. I look at women who I feel are clearly living out their purpose, using their gifts and talents in service of others. And it doesn't matter if you have a hundred people or you've got a million people following you. I think there's something to be said for that because some of my greatest teachers growing up, they didn't have very many followers or a big, you know, this big agenda. Um, but I've also learned from, you know, New York Times bestsellers. And so having, knowing women and in sort of the whole spectrum of where they are, I feel like no matter where you are on your journey, if you figured out and if you allowed yourself to align with why you're here and you're using that in service of others, then there's something to be said for that. And I think part of that came from for so long, not being clear on my own purpose or kind of like having so many different interests mm -hmm. um, and relaxing mm -hmm. into, well, there can be multiple things you do, like your work and your calling don't have to be the same thing, right? Like you can work here, but your calling is, you know, giving people encouraging messages. Now you can do that anywhere, no matter what you're doing, right? And so I've always been fascinated too, when I see people who I, and you can kind of just tell like, oh, they're fully aligned with what they're supposed to be doing. And, um, and yeah, and so spreading that on. So, so I've had people who, you know, are spiritual workers, no matter what um, background I've had. Um, I'm the next episode coming out is actually a woman who experienced sexual assault by a cop. She's now an attorney who helps women um, who have gone through the same thing. Um, I've had moms dealing with postpartum who have created business models to help other moms with postpartum. So it's not so much uh, just one kind of pocket. It's it's the spectrum of women and the, the different things that we're doing, but we can all kind of maybe pull from pieces of it. And then um, my opening question is, do you remember your first period? And so there is an element of menstruation because that's part of our journey. Um, and it's a way to just immediately kind of connect because it's we, we've gone through it and it's it's interesting because it's kind of intimate, but it's not so intimate because we've all <laughs> gone through it. And you really shared an amazing story, your own experience. <laughs> and thank you for being so vulnerable for for doing that, you know. Yeah. And then um, I do have an archetype quiz, which absolutely, for me is like. Absolutely. 
is just a fun way to, um, as a storyteller, I love psychology. I love studying people. I love sort of the characters that um, we see throughout stories, no matter what. And, you know, instead of doing one of these kind of mindless Facebook quizzes, like which pasta are you? I actually created the quiz based on psychology uh, mm -hmm. of different archetypes that I'm familiar with. <laughs> and it kind of just, it's interesting how it ties into, for most people, what they're going through in their life in that season. Um, or just, it's like, yes, I'm definitely a warrior. This resonates or, you know, I'm definitely this. And so it's just another connecting point and also a way to just um, tell our stories. Yes, we absolutely love how empowering that is. Working with people that know what their purpose is, um, using that purpose to empower other people. Um, when you just spoke about the woman that was assaulted by the cop that resonated, um, because again, like you said, I had a story that I had never told anybody as far as publicly before, and it was told on your platform. And that led me to be even more empowered. Just your platform led me to be like, Hey, let's be a little more open and honest on where you started at with your menstrual cycle, how that came to be. And ultimately it has led you to be <laughs> a menstrual activist to an extent. Um, so I absolutely love everything that you're doing because it just doesn't touch anybody that doesn't know about the divine feminine or the archetypes. Um, even if you know about it, it can still be touching. It can still be rewarding because I am a living sign of that living testimony. So thank you for everything that you are doing and that you are continuing to do. Um, so what influenced you to advocate for divine femininity? Like, how did you know that this was somewhat of your purpose or what you were supposed to be doing? Oh boy. Well, and I always lead with this. I say this with the utmost respect for the faith I grew up in. And I still am, I do still attend church, but you know, I was um, the little girl that always had a million questions. And um, I grew up in a, religious environment, <laughs> Christian background. And I noticed very early there was a father, there was a son, and this mysterious Holy Spirit. And we weren't Catholic. So my mom and my Nana, her mom were raised Catholic, mm -hmm. but I wasn't. And I say that because, um, you know, I would notice that at least in Catholicism, there was Mary. But the denomination I grew up and I was told that, that that's not like... Um, correct, um, to worship Mary, to pray to Mary. And so again, I felt this loss of really a mother, um, being a highly spiritual, even child, um, being on a spiritual path. And so I was always thinking, well, where's the mother? And I think that sort of void led to me asking questions like, where is, well, where is the mother? And so, um, again, early on, I had the example of Mary, right. but as I grew older and the comparative religion and um, found that, you know, there are the mothers everywhere. <laughs> we live on mother earth. And just the fact that um, she's been so suppressed for so long, I think is a macro for the micro and how women have been suppressed for so long. And, you know, eventually they say the pendulum swings and I think we're in the midst of that. And I don't necessarily think like the answer is a matriarchy. I think it's harmony, which is why I said we say restore harmony. I think there's a balance. They're both important. Um, and, you know, I, I went, there's a book my husband, he loves, and I, it's very dense, but brilliant. It's called Pedagogy of the Oppressed. And it's about how if you've been oppressed, okay. if you happen to become the group that become, be, regains power, how typically then you become the oppressor, but like breaking that cycle, you know? And so again, that's why cool. harmony is sort of in my blueprint. Yeah. I love that you explained about harmony because you hear how, you know, male should be at the top. 
and then you hear about women screaming women women divine feminine but it's like what about the harmony you know yeah you have divine femininity but you also have some masculinity too so where are you going to find that balance at you know i love that that is how you were able to define your purpose um because i too grew up in a very heavily southern baptist christian household um you were taught not to ask questions and i was just the one that hey i need to know <laughs> what is this you know like hey you say these birthdays are this but it's not listed in this book you know is, yeah. who's picking easter because it changes each year you know it doesn't make sense why is it the why is the united states government choosing a religious holiday it i was just that person that i was always being chastised because i wanted to know too much so i totally get it um yeah, so let's roll into, yeah. I love that you brought up the archetypes because that is going to be a lot of the conversation moving forward. So tell us more mm -hmm. about the different archetypes in the quiz that you offer. I absolutely love that you were like, hey, let me know about that first period. Take this test. I want to know your archetype. <laughs> so do you mind explaining more about your quiz, letting everybody know that um, it, to me, it was simple. It was easy to to complete and it was informative. Yeah, I'm glad you liked it. Um, yeah, you know, I wanted to create something that was simple because I, I, I love actually love taking quizzes and I love self knowledge. I love learning more about myself. I like learning about others too. But I wanted it to be something simple because like I said, I'm a mom of three. And we all have things going on. But something that could just be done in a few minutes. Um, but that could tell you more about yourself, at least where you are right now in this season. So archetypes, we actually have all of them within us and they're different expressions. And so depending on what season you are in life, one will be kind of dominant. Um, some people, you know, they don't have that hero's journey or it's delayed. And so they could be stuck in one archetype their whole life, <laughs> which isn't typical. Um, most, us, most of us yeah. will move through them. But, but also some people have one that, say, from the time they hit young adulthood all the way through, you know, they're solid, solidly one sort of embodiment expression. So I have, um, there is a, it's, it's like a three tier um, of, the goddess, which is maiden, mother, crone. And maiden is the younger expression. Mother is the first, well, really a second rite of passage. First is menstruation. Um, mother and then crone is the elder. And I added a fourth, which is the warrior, because of what's going on culturally, um, globally, the shift that is happening where the mother is coming sort of back to light a lot of warriors are involved in that happening. Right. So I wanted to include that fourth one. There are some others that could be included if you were to expand upon it, um, like queen, but actually we could, we could talk about that a little later. These four are kind of core. So, you know, Maiden is, again, she's typically known as the young one. Um, you would think maybe high school, college age, maybe a little naive or trusting, um, which, but also youthful, vibrant, someone who really believes, has great faith. So I've had people come on in their forties who have, get the maiden, but they just got, went through a divorce, but they're in a season where they are just expanding. They have to believe in a whole new life. You know, it makes sense. Um, the mother, is actually the arc rate type result I got. <laughs> and um, the mother, it's pretty self-explanatory. Now, the interesting thing is the mother, I feel like we typically see, for so long we saw one example, and that is the loving mother who will give everything of herself. Sometimes we see the mother who's selfish and abandons and doesn't care about us. And I mean this in uh, storytelling, so movies, uh, books. And some of us have lived through those experiences of having one of those sort of experiences with the mother. 
but the mother is about fertility, um, nourishing, um, typically service of others, um, very, you know, maternal. And then the crone, I've only had one person on the show who was a crone and I've been waiting, like, who's it going to be? Because she's very much missing from our culture (laughs) because we don't really have our elders and it's not a surprise. We have a youth obsessed culture that, you know, the pressure to stay younger, to look younger, no matter what it takes. Um, We discard, we have discarded our elders. Um, And so I think I I wasn't shocked that I wasn't getting a lot of uh, crones, but the crone is the elder. And that's typically, you know, if you were to mark it, you could say the third rite of passage, which would be menopause, um, grandmother age. Of course, grandmother can vary, but typically the elder, like 60 plus. Um, yeah. And they're supposed to be in a position of it's wisdom of full embodiment, not caring what anybody thinks about you anymore, passing along information. Um, yeah, just, just that. And so the, and then the fourth one, the warrior, uh, typically when we see the warrior, a female warrior, she's going to be more like masculine presenting like i think wonder woman just like her energy energy is very you know what you would think but um the warrior is very much aligned to the per their purpose um also we'll tend not to think what others think maybe more a little more masculine dominant or aligned um ha- very confident and often will have to not ask for help so a leader, very much a leader. <laughs> um, yeah, so those are the four that are in the quiz. And it's just a fun way. It's another kind of opening question to see how, first of all, like what the guest feels if they resonated. And for listeners who tune in to kind of see if someone right. who got their archetype, you know, if they resonate with right. someone. Um yeah, just a bit of information for others to find out about themselves. Yes, we love this quiz. And uh, guys, we're going to include the link for the quiz in the episode of, I'm sorry, the description of this episode so that you are able to partake in it as well. So we're going to take a quick commercial break, guys, and we'll be right back. Welcome to Kit Cramps As Dot. Org. Now, feel free to subscribe and get 15% they off. By doing so, you're subscribing to our newsletter and you receive the latest news, resources, and updates. We appreciate you for connecting with us, so we want to get you with 15% off on your first order. So go ahead and leave your first name, your last name, and your email address, and you'll have this 50% off coupon that you can use towards your first order. Now, Back to the show. So welcome back from that commercial, guys. We hope that you enjoyed it. So to keep the episode going, how essential do you feel like it is, Leslie, for an individual to be aware of their archetype? I just, I think it's, I sort of see who we are as individuals as a puzzle. And I find it to be another piece of information to be helpful, Um, especially if you're sort of like in a stage of reflection or wanting to recreate yourself or just understanding more about yourself. And something, a fun exercise you can do is once you find out what your results is, you can, you can, um, I actually have a PDF on my site but you can find examples within cinema or books just so you can see it on screen and just reflect some more about kind of how it resonates for you. Absolutely. That is great because how you've been talking about you're helping people to connect to their purpose and knowing your archetype 
is super important. I've always been one to say, okay, I want to know my human design. I want to know my birth chart. I want to know my genius type, but it's also good to know your divine femininity, your strengths, things of that sort. I believe in taking these type of assessments are super, super helpful when you are trying to divine your purpose. Maybe you're wanting to shift gears in your life because um, you mentioned the warrior. So our next question, you've already answered it. What is your archetype mother? But I remember both you and I having mother. But I was shocked once I read more about warrior because I feel like, yes, I'm mother, but I feel like the stage that I'm in now, I'm like hardcore warrior. It's like activism, activism, <laughs> leader, leader. <laughs> like, yes, we're going to take everything down. Like, <laughs> I'm just like, on one right now but i think it's just my season um because i know with the type of genius that i am the type of human design that i am spring is like my go-to season it's where i sow all my seeds with all the great ideas that's been um festering into my brain that i'm now trying to bring it to real life manifestation so being knowing that you are the mother archetype how do you use that information to fulfill your purpose in this lifetime Um, well, personally, it helps me realize how much my work is with my actual children, because before them, even though I knew I wanted to be a mother, I was always very goal driven. I moved to Hollywood to be an actress, to be in movies like I was and I very was very going for it, you know, had the agents going out all the time. And then I had to slow down when I had my kids. Um, I, there was a season where I was still doing it, doing like the mom, even mommy me auditions. And it was just, it was a lot. And so I had to slow down. And then in that slowing down realized, oh, I have three human beings here. <laughs> like I've got serious work right here. Um, you know, and then <laughs> reflecting on right. why I created Mooney was that whole, where is the mother? So like on a, on a sort of greater level, this whole mother um thread has been kind of tied to me anyway and so it's why i created moonian you know and i feel like you, you can nurture people in different ways so i could have like a food business where i'm using organic the best where i know people who buy it they're getting nourished but my way of doing it is providing a platform where i'm going to pass along information to hopefully help you helpfully encourage you, helpfully nourish you, which is what, um, hopefully, which is what a mother would do. Um, and not afraid to just be vulnerable, like to um, honor those that, that are a little, you know, younger, but then also those that have gone before me and being the bridge kind of in the gap. And so that's where I tie in <clears throat> the next phase of Moonian is actually, I'm going to have some product development uh, and that's where like periods tie in, um, because I am looking to explore into having actual products to help for that phase, for the phase where I'm in now, you know, there's people, uh, women who are dealing with cramps, like, are there teas that can help? Are there, um, and then possibly some courses right. too, just with, you know, workshops you can take with the information there. So yeah, that's how I feel I'm embodying the mother archetype with what I'm doing right now. I love that. I love that. Nurturing is so important. Pouring into others comes naturally in that mother archetype. I find the thing that I do have to pay attention to is just making sure I'm not allowing others to cross my boundaries because I am pouring into so much and I'm wanting to uplift and see things through for everybody. So I know that's one thing that I specifically have to pay attention to. Now, I love that you talked about um, periods and um, different options that you want to align with Moonian. So we would like to know more about menstruation and how that aligns with Moonian. We talked about briefly earlier about you asking specific questions to your podcast guest, um, you know, relaying certain stories. You know, if you, uh, for those of you who go follow her, you'll see that ever so often she'll post up a thread of different people that have told about their first menstrual cycle journeys. So can you just elaborate more how menstruation and Moonian works together? 
Yeah. I mean, it's so core to being to the feminine experience, at least a, f a physical embodiment, right? Because we all get it. Um, when even the word Munian, the name Munian came from the moon being the feminine, the sun being the masculine, and then communion, like yeah. coming, you know, together for something greater. And so even, you know, the word, um, there was some thought into that. And women often will sync their cycles with the moon right. or with each other. So, you know, subconsciously, there's a lot already there with it. But um, outwardly, I share the first period stories of every guest. Um, and then I'm also sharing um, other content from other creators who focus on this like you do with menstruation, because I feel like we can just learn from each other. If this is really, it's like, I'm kind of more behind the scenes of it, you know, and um, putting just more of the information out there for others to understand. But with menstruation, then, you know, there's a lot that comes with that, like the pain that so many of us have, it being irregular, um, fibroids, hormones, PCOS, you know, infertility. I mean, there's so much tied to women's health once we get our menstrual cycles. That's really, it's, it's part, just part of the journey. Right. And that's just such a, it's the first rite of passage. And I really see Munyan ultimately as it's taking you through the whole feminine experience from being that young maiden in your first period through the mother archetype of just even being in your fertile years through crone, you know, and how you can still be sexy and still be a boss and still be all these things at 50, 60, 70, you know? Um, and it just, it's really exciting to me that I think coming together as a community as uh, for women and hopefully passing down to, to younger, to girls so that, Maybe they don't have to search as much. And I don't, I think like with, you know, platforms like TikTok, there's, there is so much information. It's not like when I was younger and <laughs> like, just didn't know. You might have to try to pick up Cosmopolitan magazine and get some kind of information, especially growing up. You know, I, I had basic information, but because my household was kind of religious, it was like, it wasn't free flowing information when it came to femininity and these different things right. that we experience as girls. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that you have that connection because you did mention earlier about the period being the first rite of passage. And I love that. I think that's something that to be celebrated more when I started seeing that girls were having like period parties and things of that sort. I was like, that is so cute because it wasn't celebrated when, <laughs> when it happened for me. I'm an eighties baby. So it's, I hear you yeah, like cosmopolitan true. vote. Like, let me try to get some more additional information for what, you know, mom tell me I can't do this because the Bible said that I better not, you know, use a tampon for these reasons, <laughs> you know, it was just all these different things and rules that were just not really beneficial for us to have optimal menstrual health. So I love that you're offering that and wanting to even extend additional products and services to cater to this thing that is not a taboo is something that we have to live with that is natural and normal. So speaking of cycles, mm -hmm. do you have a ritual or a regimen that you do to prepare for your cycle? You know, I am just now, I'm also like, a, I'm an 80s baby. <clears throat> We're very similar, I think, in age, but I never had, a, I never had one. Mm -hmm. Now that I've gone through a lot, because I really have at every stage, it's never been an easy thing for me. And I say that because when I got my first period at yes. 12, it diagnosed me with dysmenorrhea, which is basically just intense pain with your period. Mm -hmm. So I mean... I would be in the fetal right. position screaming in pain every month. Ibuprofen 800 milligrams was written to me as a prescription. But the thing is, it was also um, 
not regular. So I couldn't almost prepare. I couldn't prepare for it. It would just hit me like lightning and I'd be like, ah. Um, mm-hmm. And then once I, it did, it was pretty painful until I actually had my first daughter. And once I had kids, the pain stopped. But a few years before pregnancy, I, I had, I found out I had fibroids. Um, which caused some irregularity. Um, the fibroids have all shrunk besides one small one since having my kids. But now I'm, I found out I was like, my hormones were not regulated. And I was having, maybe TMI, but this is the right podcast for this. Last year I had, I was having 40 day periods. And I mean, Absolutely. bleeding for 40 days not like spotting bleeding for 40 days and so i went to the doctor yeah. several times i went to the er unit and at the time was told you know the only thing to kind of stop this is my hormones are unbalanced they thought it might have been the fibroids the fibroids are gone that it's a hormone imbalance and progesterone was needed um so you know i'm in a place now of really trying to just get the balance and finally having like maybe an easygoing uh, monthly experience. And which is why I love talking with women who do womb work, who do have routines, who do have, yeah, because I'm just figuring it out after going through all of that (laughs) since the age of 12. Yeah. Yeah, I always practice how important it is to have routine if that's leading up during things of that sort you know if you ever want any additional information you know i'm your girl i can get you whatever you need to help out in any areas but we love that even considering the fact to do a regimen is a big step in you know combating issues that you have with your menstrual health i always recommend to try to track your cycle if you can through like one of those free period tracking apps and that can be beneficial with helping you see the trends or what you know maybe last summer and this summer might be acting the same is it because my sexual activity change is it because you know i was overly stressed out because i was working on this major project this month it gives us an opportunity to um let that be like a foundational tool um to use to help us properly track what's going on in order for us to try to develop the best regimen. Yeah. And you know, I do, I do use an app and that has helped me so much. Uh, I will say that I've done like the castor oil packs uh, seasonally for myself and Mm -hmm. I'm starting to explore more teas so I'm like in the process of getting like my regular routine, but the, the app definitely did help me. It does help me. We love to hear it. We love to hear it. Well, are there any last remarks or comments that you would like to share before we close out for the day? Oh my goodness. Well, first of all, I love the quote of the day. I really loved it. I loved <laughs> the you. affirmation of the day. And I the p- affirmations are so powerful. They really can transform your mind, which then transforms your whole life. <clears throat> I've experienced that. So thank you for that. Um, no, you know, I would just say <clears throat> we're fortunate that we are in a time where we have access to so much information and there are so many communities now um, that focus on girls and women's wellness. And, um, you know, I, it, again, it's a subconscious thing, but I think if there was this sort of like belief or feeling that being on your period, you were dirty. Cause it's like, at least for me growing up, there's, there's a scripture. No one ever said it, but it's like in, you know, the scripture, um, And, you know, I would just watch how growing up, how like your dad, I remember was a very different story, but a lot of guys, it's like, they would be afraid to even say the word pad or period. Um, 
But I just get excited to see that things yeah. are changing, that it's, it's not taboo. It's just like a normal function that many of us deal with. Um, so yeah, just get the help you need, get the information you need. And if you're listening to this podcast, I'm sure you already are, but it's exciting. And um yeah, I'm just looking forward to where this is all going. Love to hear it. Love to hear it. Guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be back in just a few moments. Now, navigating to our resource center, we want to give you guys access to all these complimentary resources that we have available for you. We have our blog, book suggestions, our menstrual blood chart, exercise moves to kick cramps ass. We have recipes. We have reports. We have research studies that helps to prove how holistic approaches assist with achieving more wellness. We have wellness tips, wellness referrals, so business organizations and individuals that we would like to refer to you that are a strategic partners, wound terminology, maybe there's some options that you're not aware of. This can help you out. And lastly, yoga moves to help you kick cramps ass. Feel free to take advantage of this complimentary resource. All right, guys, now back to the show. All right, guys, welcome back from that commercial break. It was such a great episode today. We definitely want to give you guys news announcements and events. So again, May is menstruation month, women's health month, um, mental Awareness Month, and then on the 28th, we will be celebrating Menstrual Hygiene Day. Of course, today is May 20th, so it is only 11 days left in the month. And don't forget, we are doing our giveaway still. We've been giving away menstrual pro all of the menstrual products that we have on our website each week. There's a new winner. So week one, we did our cramp elixir. Week two, it was the goddess bath potion. Week three, it's our book, NNG's formula to kick cramps ass. Let me actually grab that so I can show it to you guys. Week four, we have our KCA kit, which houses all of our period products, plus additional um, organic pads, disc wipes, things of that sort, discounts, information, menstrual blood chart, the whole nine yards. And then our grand prize. So for everybody that actually participated in each week, we are going to be doing a grand prize giveaway at the end of the month for a free three month nutritional, I'm sorry, menstrual therapy package with us. Yes, you heard that. So if you have uterine issues, any womb health issues, we will help you through our service that we offer, which is menstrual therapy. All right, guys. Um, so if you have any listener mail, we are always accepting it free. Feel free to comment on this episode, or if you would like a more personalized experience, email us at contact at kickcrampsass.org, and we will have that information in the description of this episode. But to recap, we had Leslie Williams Mitchell from Lunion on today, guys. Season two, episode 11, Embracing Your Divine Femininity, talking about what all Moonian has to offer. We talked about the archetypes and how menstruation aligns with all of that. All right, guys. So be sure to like this podcast, comment on it, share it with somebody that you feel like could resonate with it. All right, guys, be sure to subscribe to our website where you can keep up with the latest news events. Um, resources, tools, and everything that we have to offer. And also subscribe to our YouTube channel where we have additional content that will be more um, beneficial for you in acquiring menstrual equity, combating period poverty, and achieving, and I'm sorry, achieving optimal wound wellness. All right, guys. So we want to manifest a very, very happy menstruation Monday for you, but we're also manifesting a positive productive and peaceful menstrual journey ahead and remainder of the week. And we'll be seeing you guys next Monday. Peace.